Hey everyone, welcome back for another TypeScript Data Structures video. In the last couple lessons, we covered stacks and queues, and in today's lesson, we're going to cover sets. For this lesson, most of the basic functions we need for a set are already implemented in TypeScript, so we're going to cover those, but we'll also write a few common set operations. If you've spent any time in a math class, you may have learned a little about set theory already. A set is a simple data structure similar to an array or a list with a few key differences. The biggest difference is uniqueness. A set can only contain a single instance of a value. That means if you have an array of data and it includes one, one, two, two, and three, then converting it to a set will give you one, two, and three. Another key difference is the ordering of elements. Sets are unordered, so elements aren't accessed in any particular way and there's no way to sort without using some other data structure to put the elements into. Sets can be implemented using a variety of underlying data structures, such as binary trees or hash tables. In our example, we're going to be looking at the built-in set functionality of JavaScript. If you want to learn more about the mathematical foundations of set theory, check out the Stanford link in the description. Sets are very limited in their functionality. Typically, sets only have a few different functions. In TypeScript, or JavaScript, the basic functions that a set has are add, which puts values into the set, delete, which removes values from the set, clear, which removes everything from the set, size, which returns the number of elements in the set, and has, which checks if a value exists in a set. Since all of these functions are already implemented in TypeScript, we're going to be writing some common operations that are used on sets. Let's start by making a new set. We'll make a set of numbers. So we're going to call this number set. And it's a new set. And then we're going to use the generic number. So this arrow notation with numbers means that the TypeScript set type is generic, which means we can set it to any type that we wish. For this example, we're using numbers. but Say we wanted to make a set of strings, we could do this exact same thing using string. This set will only allow strings added into it, while this set will only allow numbers added into it. You can even use your own custom types, or any, if you want anything to be allowed in a set. Adding to a set is pretty simple. We can add a number to a set just by using dot add on our set. Let's add 9. Like we talked about before though, sets are unique. So if we add another nine to our set, it's only going to have one nine. Let's add a couple more things into our set. Let's add one eight, and then we'll add two sevens. Now, if we log out our set, we will see that there's only three things in our set. So sets.ts. Our set only has three values, which are 9, 8, and 7. You can also chain together adds with the set. So let's say we wanted to add 6 and 4 and 5. We can add them all like this. And let's run that one more time. Now we see our set has six things in it, since each of those values were unique. We can also remove elements from our set using the delete method. So let's remove 9 and then print out our set again. Now we see our set only has five elements. Unlike adding, we cannot chain our delete operations together, though. The next thing we want to look at is has. This allows us to check if something exists in our set. Let's test it by logging out some values, and then we're going to check to see if our set has 8 in it. And if it does, it should return true, which it does. Now let's test it with 0. False. So we know our set does not contain 0. Using size will return the number of items that are in our set. So we know since we removed 9, our set should have 5 elements, which it does. So you can see here that size is not a function, but it's actually just an attribute of the set in TypeScript and JavaScript. Next, let's clear our set. 
This will remove everything from our set. So if we want to search our size now, it should be zero. Yep. Sometimes you want to combine sets in different ways. There are a few operations that we commonly run on sets, such as union, intersect, difference, and is subset. So we're going to start by writing our union function. So a union is a set operation that will combine everything in two sets to make a brand new set with their combined elements. Let's make our union function. So our union function is going to be a function that returns a set. It's going to have two parameters, both sets, and it's going to be able to be used with any type of set. That's what these T's are for. So if we want to use this with a number set, then it'll work. If we want to use it with a string set or some other set, it will work as well. So first, we're going to set a new set called C and give it everything that's in A. So what this does is it creates a new set and assigns all values of A to it. Then we're going to loop through B and add all of the values of B. So we can loop through sets pretty easily like this. For const k of B add k. So this loops through every element of B called k and then adds each of those elements into our new set that we just created. When that's done, we're going to return C. All right, let's see how that worked. So let's come down here. Let's get rid of our clear and our delete. And then we're going to make a new set called number set two. And this is going to be an also number set, just like our first number set. And we're also going to chain together some add operations. So number set two is going to include zero, one, two, eight, and four. All right, now we can run, let's create another set called union set. And we're going to run union with our other two sets, just like that. And now if we print out our union set, we should see that it's a combination of both. All right, so the new union set has nine values. As you can see, any doubles were not duplicated because since our new set is still a set, that uniqueness is still enforced. Intersection is another operation similar to union. So an intersection of two sets will return only the values that are in both sets and discard the rest. So our intersection function is going to have the exact same parameters as our union function. So this is another generic function that can take in any type of set. It's going to have A and B again. And then it's also going to return a set just like union did. We're going to create a new set C this time, except this time we are not going to be setting the values to the values of A. What we're going to do now is loop through A, and then if B has the element that we're currently at, we're going to add it to our new set, otherwise do nothing. So as we, after we're finished looping through that, let's return C. So this will only happen if the item K is in both set A and set B. So let's see how that works. Let's come down here. We have our two number sets. Let's create our new set called intersect set and set it equal to the function intersection with our two sets that we created before. Then we can log out our result. We should see that the new set only has two values because those two are the only that are in both number set and number set two. The next operation that we're going to cover is difference. Difference will take a set and it will remove everything from set A that is also in set B. 
So let's make our function difference with the same parameters as the other two. So we have A, which is a generic set, and B, which is a generic set. And then we return C. So in this example, we're going to set C equal to A again, like we did in union. And then we're going to loop through A. Then what we're going to do is we're going to check if each value is in B. If it is, then we're going to delete that value from our new set C. Once this is finished looping, we should have a set that is everything in set A that is not in set B. All right, we'll come down here. We'll make our different set and set it equal to the difference. Now this will differ based on which way you do this. The other two are the same either way, but the order of parameters here actually does make a difference. So in this example, this will give us everything that's in number set that is not in number set two. So we know that eight and four are in both. So we should see everything that is in number set except eight and four. Yep, and so our set has four elements now, nine, seven, six, and five. The last function that we'll cover today is used to check if a set is a subset of another set. This means that we're going to check if every single element in one set exists in a, another one. So if I have a set called X, and that set has one, two, and three in it, and then another set Y that has one, two, and three, but it also has four and five, then we would say that X is a subset of Y. Now this doesn't go both ways. Just because X is a subset of Y doesn't mean that Y is a subset of X. Because as you can see, Y has one, two, three, four, five which means that four and five are not in X. So if we check to see if Y is a subset of X, it would be false. So we're gonna write this function called is subset. It's gonna have the same parameters as our previous ones, A and B. And we're gonna, this time, return a Boolean value because we wanna return true if it is a subset and false if it's not. So what we want to do is loop through every value of A. And then we're going to check to see if B has that value. However, we want to know if B doesn't have that value. That's what this um, exclamation point is for. So if it doesn't have that value, we want to return false. If we get through this whole loop, and never hit that point will return true. What that means is we looped through every single element over and over and checked each of those elements to see if those elements exist in B. If they don't exist, we return false, meaning that A is not a subset of B. If we get through this whole loop and never hit this, that means it is a subset. So we'll come down here and we're going to make two new sets called set one and set two. Now, just for something different, let's make these string sets. So we're gonna set the type to string. And then in set one, let's add A, B, oops, and C. And then we're gonna make another set, set two, which is also a string set, and give set two A, B, C, D, and E. Then what we can do is call our is subset function and log out the response. So we're going to check to see if subset, if set one is a subset of set two. Oops. This should return true. 
and it does. Now, if we swap these, we'll see that it should return false because set two is not a subset of set one since we have these extra values D and E. All right, so after this, that wraps up our TypeScript data structures lesson on sets. Hopefully this is a helpful introduction to sets. And if you're interested in learning more about the mathematical foundations of set theory, definitely check out that Stanford link in the description. It has a lot of useful information. Let me know if there's anything else you'd like to see me cover, even if it's not data structure related. Let me know in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe and have a great day, everybody.